Hello again, this is Brendan and I'm working on a uh, digital painting which is uh, sort of a spaceship. This is uh, maybe surrealistic, maybe um, sci-fi kind of thing, I'm not quite sure. I'm just working on some of the details here. These are supposed to be birds right here, but they don't look like birds. And these will probably be, they need to be dark, but not like pitch black. I mean, actually, they could be any color. They could be white birds. I'm thinking, <clears throat> but the sun is uh, setting behind them. So all you're going to see mostly is their shadow, but it's not going to be pitch black because they're off in a distance. And, um... When things are far away, their both their shading and their lighting uh, tends to just be less. I mean, period. That's the end of that sentence. Just less. But what does that mean? And that causes kind of a, you know, a problem. It's one of those things. It seems like it's easy to say, or easy to read and understand. Things get duller as they go away, but does that mean they get lighter? Does it mean they get darker? That depends on the lighting. If you look out, if you have a good view, you can see off into the distance in the daytime when it's bright. What does it look like? It looks like things are getting foggier as, as they go away, but not like, I mean, assuming you have good eyesight or have uh, your glasses on or whatever. It's not like things just become transparent or taper off, and it's also not like they're getting fuzzy. You can still see, but you see with a different type of clarity. So, for example, if you have a big, um, if you're in a city, if you're looking at a cityscape, and you look off in the distance, and you see um, all these buildings. Well, the buildings are big, so you can still see it, but it doesn't have as vibrant of a color set as the buildings that are closer to you and you really have to you know just sit there and stare uh, imagine on a foggy day this becomes much more obvious so on a if it's foggy then that basically uh, intensifies the phenomenon that I'm talking about right now it makes it so that um as things get further off into the distance, they just become more foggy. They become uh, like shrouded in the clouds. <clears throat> so, there's so many ways that this could be put in the words. I'm not really sure what the, the best way is. If you have something that's up close to you, let's say you have a whole bunch of uh, something of reasonable size, just a crowd of people, for example. The people who are closest to you, um, physically, you'll be able to see. Uh, let's say all the people are wearing like the same clothes. They all have red shirts on. The ones who are closest to you, the shading of their shirts, the, the, the shadows around them and the shadows on their shirts should come out more uh, vibrantly. You should see them. There'll be a darker shade of, you know, whatever it is, like black or, or some complementary colors or whatever lighting happens to be going on there. But as you go off into the distance, people wearing the same exact color shirt, as it gets further away, that color will change. It's not going to be the same exact hue of red. And the shading around them will also be, it's almost like more pale. That's because it's daytime. If it is daytime. If it's nighttime, and uh, or it's just dark outside for whatever reason, then there would be a different phenomenon. Things would probably just get darker as they go off into the distance. Now in this case we have the sun is setting behind us. So that means shadows are coming towards us. And uh, technically speaking this isn't even drawn. The ship here isn't really drawn the way it should be. There should probably be more shading up front. I did put, it's a little darker up here this part should probably be shaded in more and maybe just a little bit of light coming around the edge but I can uh, I can fix that 
and uh, uh, well, there's another reason for that too, because this is the focal point of the image. So if I made it all dark, it wouldn't really be what I wanted it to be. Because here's another phenomenon that happens is that the reason for that is I'm just going to try and do that effect I was just talking about right now. Let's say there should be like more lighting coming from the edges here because that would be the sun hitting the uh, the back there. could even give it color like yellowish sun color I wonder. Would that work? No. I'm not going to do that. I'm not even sure if that's you know, if that's it but and maybe like over here would there be some light maybe kind of like this just coming off the edge I don't think it's the case because yeah just the way this is shaped but you could probably do a little lighting up here this is way too intense I gotta make this uh, opacity a little lower <coughs> you can imagine the light will be hitting up here even the top rim of this because there's nothing to block the sun from hitting this spot see the sun is back there and imagine as it comes up it can hit the top spot here it can't hit here because this part is blocking it so this part will be shaded however it can hit there and it can and will be affecting the edges right here coming around like that <clears throat> it might even be hitting the top of this little bit and that's kind of what I did with you know this whole thing, like this area here. These things, um, I'm not sure what they're called. Are they called banisters or something? These are like uh, the crow's nest would be up here. This is where the sails would hang from. And so, as you can see, on the front of them, I tried to fill it in black, and on the back or on the edges here, that's where the sun would be hitting it. So I just gave it that kind of look. Um, it's not uh, it didn't really come out so realistic but I'm not gonna nitpick on that right now there's uh, so much detail that could be added to this it's just ridiculous <clears throat> this type of thing could go on for days I've done a couple of digital paintings that literally went on for you know multiple days it was like if I were to put all the work time together it might be a total of like 32 hours of work or something like that. Here. So going along with what I just said, these are off in the distance so I use a sort of a, a gray and you can see it works out fine. If I want pitch black, I think I have, uh, yeah this is pitch black I have selected on the palette now. If I want in and did this guy with, oh uh, that's actually on low opacity, okay. So if I did that in pitch black and I come back, you can see how he kind of stands out. And he shouldn't really stand out like that. That'll give you a feeling that he's closer. That's not how it should be. Something that's off in the distance, it should be fading away. Whether it be getting darker, getting lighter, uh, you know, just correlating with the light source, I guess. And things that are closer like this, now I can use a uh, darker shade and consider where the lighting is coming from. See this one will be a little complicated around this area. This is like a giant chain. It goes down to an anchor. So there's going to be all these little uh, grooves and ridges. And uh, primarily the lighting in this from these, uh, what do you call them, like jet propulsion, jet streams, they will be affecting this probably the most. So what I was saying just a second ago was um, <clears throat> the other, uh, what was I saying? The other phenomenon. The other phenomenon is, let me get back to where I was. I actually forget what I was talking about. Well, let me just keep doing this. It'll come back to me. This one goes around here. Yeah, this might even be too dark. This is going to affect that. This is going to affect that. that. I think I definitely did something wrong with these chains. Just be like that. Something, there's something weird up here. This, here's one link. It's like a link. Another link. I think this part 
it's not filled in correctly kind of fumbled it up that should do it though that's about it here's right here it looks like two links that are just kind of blended into one anyway so the light coming for this is going to affect that <clears throat> and since it's closer I think that's what I was talking about this one will use the uh, the darker it'll have darker shading and brighter lighting that's basically the whole point definitely feel like I'm overdoing this a bit uh, I guess it's okay so since the light is closer here this will have lighter lights and darker darks kind of feel like in this area as we taper off as we get further away from that that light there we don't need as much it'll taper off like that yeah that's about right we keep zooming in zooming out so what I did with this one I had to do a little bit of research for it um, I had to look up the ship because you know I don't just like I haven't drawn ships enough that I can just pull a ship off the top of my head and start drawing it but I just wanted a simple kind of ship the idea here is I think I was watching uh, some anime or something like uh, Battleship Yashimoto Space Battleship Yashimoto I think or Yakimoto I can't remember it was a Japanese thing and I used to see that in a cartoon when I was a kid I always thought it was really cool and so I want to do something similar to that but not the same and the reason being was purely so that I could have freedom to uh, to do what I want if you want to uh, copy something that's been done before then I guess it, it makes you feel a little confined and you have to follow all the rules of what it's supposed to look like and then people start complaining if it's not done right on and on like that okay so even with that I feel like I brought this forward a little bit more it's it's bringing you know this this area it's bringing it pushing it forward into the foreground because I'm using uh, darker darks and lighter lights to uh, it's already pretty light I could put some highlights on there like this and so doing that kind of makes this pop forward and that's it a little highlight here there this one this actually looks pretty cool how that is over there but it doesn't look finished but I could even see I could even just neglect that and leave it how it is because it's kind of like it pushes it off into the distance these are two anchors that are holding the ship down while it's keeping itself in the air with these uh, propulsion things here it's like engines shooting out waves uh, pulsating waves of uh, some kind of blue energy <clears throat> and um, for scale to show you how big it is these are actually two characters two little uh, you know I don't know if they're aliens or humans but just regular humanoid guys sitting there and then the other thing I had to do is uh, make sure I was getting the right sunset colors I'm not sure if I got that I'm down with this one the way it is now but I did um, you know I did use some reference for that I just went and looked at Google images and also while I was there I was looking at things like this if it's if the Sun is setting and things are off in the distance what do they look like and most of the images I looked at were kind of uh, not like this side here more like these things over here which which means they should basically just be dark because again the Sun is behind them and all you're gonna see is shadow and they're so far off in the distance that you can't really uh, make out the details so especially since you're only looking at the shaded side it would be like if you were in outer space and uh, flying on the dark side of the moon well all you would see is darkness on that side of the moon 
Okay. But if that's true, this is where a bit of a conundrum came up. It's uh, do I or do I not shade in this area? And definitely, it depends on where it is too. If this, if it's true that this is up like that in, it, it's uh, going up in altitude, and the sun is still behind it, then the answer definitely should be yes. That this should have. But it should be off in the distance. We should only be looking at the shaded side of it. Bring the opacity much, much further down. Not up, down. And what I want to do is kind of have it taper off. And then, um, of course, as a basic rule of thumb, when things get further away, they also lose. Uh, I've heard someone describe it as they lose their orange. Basically this uh, grass here, this uh, greenish color, when it's closer this is the actual color and as it gets further away into the distance it seems to get more blue, like blue-ish or blue. And the way you can check that out is by do this color here, that's where it started off. And as it goes further in difference into the distance it goes further off it'll be like uh, closer to this green and then eventually it'll just get kind of bluish if you find that hard to believe go look at uh, go search for some images of mountains and have a good look at them and you will see that the mountains get blue as they go off into the distance they get very blue kinda like that I think probably better than how I had it before. It all depends on you know, many factors. So these these areas will, will be dark even though it should go you know it should go blue as it goes off but if there's shade if the Sun is not hitting this area then obviously it's going to be dark so there's going to be a little bit of combination of uh, you know there's a little bit of a balance where should it be dark and where should it be uh, blue and you can have light reflecting off of things too so it's always light is always bouncing around here and there oh yeah and the other thing I was trying to bring up I kept forgetting despite all the things that I just said and we all you know just common sense we all know the difference between shading and lighting and where it should be light and where it should be dark but even with that being said you have to remember that our eyes adjust to things so if it's dark outside and, you, and uh, it's very bright in your house when you go outside you can't see very well at first but if you ever go out to like I don't know some place where you may be camping or something like this then where it's just very very dark and there's no city lights and there's no street lights what would happen is you can't see at first but your eyes will slowly adjust to the darkness and um, once they get adjusted it won't be you still won't see as clearly as you do in the daytime but you'll see a lot you'll get used to it you'll eventually be able to see pretty well <clears throat> and uh, animals do that very quickly like uh, cats and dogs not sure about dogs I think cats do it very quickly. They can just, uh, you know, jump outside and see in the dark a lot better than we do. They have uh, better eyes for that. I'm just adding a little shading, texture, and stuff here and there. Give it a little feeling of uh, space and depth. So, with that being true, since this is the centerpiece, this, um, you know, this giant ship here. I don't really want to make it too realistic when it comes to lighting of you know in regards to where the sun is coming from this and that I want to keep in mind that your eyes would have adjusted to the light and so you can still make out a lot of the details and things like this and the colors will be more vibrant because it's close to us because that effect whether when I was saying like you know your eyes adjust to the light when you're outside, uh, you know, if it's dark or light, 
that also applies to your your eyes ability to do that also applies to things that you see in the day if you're staring at something that's very bright for a while your eyes will get used to it and uh, same thing for something dark that's about that so for today I'm just fiddling around with this a bit I just spent some time working on this it's supposed to look like just kind of like a rock that's coming out of the earth naturally and uh, the idea is that I guess that rock was a convenient place for the ship to park itself while business goes on so I'm imagining this is a ladder that comes down from the ship you know it is kind of a primitive design there is uh, that's why I call it like it's either sci-fi or surrealistic because you have to think if they have such advanced technology they can make a ship that flies like this well first of all why would they need sails like that and um, you know why would they need to anchor themselves and why would they use a ladder if they have that kind of sophisticated technology wouldn't they just like have a little ship that will help them fly off of that ship to the ground or you know just park the ship somehow um, and so what I was thinking for that just creatively is that the reason for it is because this is sort of a, uh, a luxury ship their technology is so advanced that they can just toy around with things like this and um, you know they don't worry about being efficient because they have so much energy available to them that they can play with things like this and so you know maybe some people are coming off the ship uh, doing some business or maybe it's even just somebody's luxury ship and they stop by this little uh, sort of antique building um, what's the word not even antique kind of uh, you know, old western movie <clears throat> you know the western like a, a, a pub you can imagine in the old days they would park their horses in the front here now they're parking they're flying uh, retro looking spaceship and this is the door here and I had more ideas there's a lot more stuff I wanted to work on it too to, just to make that kind of idea come out one thing was maybe to have some people climbing down the ladder uh, maybe some guys are carrying boxes moving things um, and then here the visit it'll be kind of a pub like visit they're going to have a drink and relax take a break so Right now, it just looks like a very simple beginnings of an old wooden uh, fort or something. And what could I do to bring that idea out more is maybe put like a, a neon sign here that, with some alien characters on it. It's uh, make it look like an alien bar or a pit stop. Just kind of a pit stop is what I'm thinking. They'll all stop here and get some food and drink. So the overall overall feeling is that they're just uh, just passing by just stopping by here I think that's about my my first goal here is just to get this uh, you know the foundation down and the basic colors and the uh, what do you call it? The, the primary objects there's like a digital painting like this which is just pretty much free form having some fun uh, I, I just want to pick out I didn't have too many goals with it I can see the goals as you can see the goals I just stated there's just like three or four things I'm trying to portray one is that there's a ship uh, parked here the other is that there's some people coming and going from this ship and lastly that there is some sort of a pit stop uh, rest stop that uh, people are going to be going into and uh, you know doing what they do eat or drink so those three things need to come out and that's what you know that's that's just my goal right there so now I have a goal how do I follow through with that and make that come out visually well that's uh, that's part of what this is here it's just the foundation uh, for starters and then um, whoops I'm actually kinda on phase two right now which is uh, laying out um, I'd say phase one was just getting the the rough images in here. And phase two is getting the colors and the forms of things in uh, in better shape. So at this point, you could probably even say, well, I could call it done at this point, right? You know, 
you say it looks good enough because it gets the job done assuming you can tell these are characters and that's sort of uh, a little building that people can go into there's an anchor here right so that's all done but I just want to keep going in with the details make it look like a, a real finished piece so for now I'll just leave it here and I'll probably stop this video here now if you can't tell I'm actually a little tired today so just leave it at that and we'll see you next time bye bye